All right, so next up we're gonna to attempt to install this Daikin wall-mounted uh, mini-split unit. This is air conditioning and heat. Take a walk out here. And we're gonna install this exterior unit as well. You can see I've already got it mounted up. So on these units, you can see it has a little nub on the side over here and it correlates to if it's covering the on. So it says off here, which you can't see and it says on here. So if it's sitting like this, that means it's off. If you turn it upside down, these all connect and the unit will power up. So we'll leave it in the off setting. The breaker is also off inside, so we have no power coming to the box. It's best to operate that way so you don't electrocute yourself. We'll run our power up through here, make our connections for line one and two, and our ground. Okay, so that interior unit needs to get mounted way up there from the step, from the step that it's going to be, that I'm going to set the ladder on to about where it's at is about 10 feet. All right, we, got, we, we have our wire clamp connector here on the back of that box. Now that wire comes in from the back, up through, and then it'll come out the service hatch at the top. And then once we have it mounted on the wall, we'll cut it to length, strip it back, strip the wires off, and then feed it to the um, terminals there. We have this coolant line, this set moved out of the way. And I was concerned that I may have kinked it because of the instructions say just bend it out of the way. But I look back in here and we have, it looks fine. So I just don't like bending copper wire. So just do it once, um, but it's got a flexible portion here. This is our drain line. So we're gonna put both of these together and we're gonna tape them together. Now we want them going on a downhill angle a little bit. So we're going to take some measurements from here, figure out where exactly this hole is going to be. And they're saying a 2 and 9 sixteenths hole. I don't know if that's going to be big enough. So after some struggle, they got it mounted. Nothing more than what you saw earlier. I was just working with it. Got the wires pulled through. <clears throat> now, this is the plate that goes over them. So once they're in there, 
they're covered. They come up through this chase down here, up underneath here, and it tells you how they want to be wired. It's nice just to have a good set of wire, uh, electrical pliers, wire strippers, cutters. Having a good set makes your job a lot easier. As usual, having the right tool makes it so you can do a good job. You've got the ground wire, signal wire, and two and one. And I use those corresponding colors. The ground is green, obviously, like it usually is. Ground to green. The white goes to the orange. Black to the blue. Red to the red. It helps to take a picture of all that with your phone. That way when you're down at the control or at the power unit, you know which ones you did. All right, so the unit is up on these feet and it has a minimum, we're looking at the distances that it needs to be away from the wall. It needs 11 and 13 sixteenths minimum away from the wall to be happy. So we'll just put it at 15 inches, call it good. Nothing we really needed space for. Now here's our whip here with our, this is our communication line and power cable to the indoor unit. I've already been back in there. So this just goes up to our little uh, break the box there. This is our base. This will go up in there. This comes down here. So this just fits up inside here. And it wires up to the wires in there. The signal, a ground, a number two, and, num and a number one. So upstairs we used the red for number one, the black for number two, white for signal, and obviously green for ground. Now down here we have line one, line two, and ground. Bring it in and switch to the slotted side. All right, we'll follow that same process up here. Line one. Line two, signal, and ground. So we got those all in. Now as we place the cover back on, I want to make sure I'm not putting any undue stress on the wires in there. So here's our connections for our line set to be run. So now in regards to wiring, we're all hooked up here. We've got our communication line right here. It's running to our indoor unit. We've got our power supply here running to our outdoor unit, which feeds everything. Okay. The next step is to hook up our coolant lines. To do that, we also need to run the channel that's going to run that. 
All right, you can see we've got all our refrigerant line uh, track in. So the tracking is in place. It comes from where it exits the building down to the outside unit. Now we'll run our refrigeration lines and they just zip tie right in. So these little pieces that are adjustable. So we'll run it along up there, zip tie them all in, run it along down here. Then we'll be able to flare the ends and install it. All right, so upstairs, you saw it getting charged downstairs. You charge it and you turn it on. This, this unit is, is fully operational. Uh, the things I really like about this unit, outside it's nearly silent. Inside it's extremely quiet. It's quieter inside here than it is just the sound of air moving in my HVAC system, just my air handler in my house, the main house. Final thoughts, you can install the units yourself. You can wire it yourself. But unless you're pretty uh, savvy, I don't think you'd be able to charge it yourself. So the bottom line is, run it all yourself. Find an HVAC person who's willing to come out and pay a service charge. Just have it to flare the ends and hook it up.